Welcome to the Today we're going to take a look at displacement, distance, speed, velocity, and acceleration. We looked at the beginning of kinematics. Okay, so the first thing we should notice what are scalars of vector quantity? Well, a scalar quantity is a quantity that has magnitude only. For example, if you wanted to find the time to go from one point to the next, you simply say, okay, well, that took two minutes. So direction doesn't matter. As opposed to a vector quantity, it has magnitude and direction. So the direction you're traveling is very important. For example, a force. I would say I'm applying a force of two newtons here downwards. Or I'm applying a force of two newtons here upwards. So the main difference between a scalar and a vector quantity is that a scalar quantity has magnitude only, a vector quantity has magnitude and direction. And we look at four quantities today, very good. Displacement, distance, speed and velocity. Okay, distance is a scalar quantity because direction doesn't matter. Displacement is a vector quantity because direction matters. Speed is a scalar quantity, velocity is a vector quantity. And later we look at acceleration, which is also a vector quantity. Okay, so what is distance? Distance will be the total length travel. The displacement though, one of the versions for explaining displacement is distance from starting point. From starting point, or it could also be distance from an equilibrium point. Okay? Right? So, this depends on vector quantity. It's very important where you start from and the direction you are traveling in. This simple example will show us that difference. Okay? So, let's see. We're going from O to E. So, what's the distance travel? O to E, simple, 2. Travel 2 meters. Displacement, I started at O, I finished it at E, so I also travel 2 meters. O to A to B now. Travel from O to A is 2. A to B now, that's 3. 3 and 2 is 5. So my total distance is 5. Displacement, distance from a starting point. I am at B, I started at O, so my displacement is simply, same thing, 5. Here is where the definition comes in now. O to B to E. O to B is 5, then back to E, that's 8. In total distance, but displacement is distance from your starting point. So I am here, OBE, so I am here, I started here, so my displacement is 2. See the difference? I, am, I finished here, but I started here. Although I went on this journey, I finished here, and I started here. So my displacement is 2 meters. Okay? Last, O to B and back to O. So my total distance travel would have been 5 and 5, 10. While my displacement would be, I started at O, but I finished it at O. So how far am I? And if you guess O, very good. Sorry, zero, very good. Okay? So this is the difference between distance and displacement. It's simply the distance from a starting point. It's a vector quantity. Okay? Scalar, vector. A vector, magnitude and direction. Here now we come to three new variables. Three new quantities called speed, velocity and action. Speed, as you all know, is distance travel divided by time. This unit is ms minus 1. Velocity, displacement divided by time. This SI unit is ms minus 1. This is a vector quantity, so this makes this a vector quantity. Direction matters. Acceleration now is a change in velocity for unit time. So, based on how your velocity is changing with unit time, you have your acceleration. Okay, so these are three things that you must learn and understand the difference between a scale and a vector quantity. Here is where most of the questions come from, displacement time graphs and velocity time graphs. So let's see what these lines represent. So let's take a look at from here to here. If we look here, we see how our displacement and time is changing. So if you look carefully here, I'm starting at a zero displacement and I'm moving all the way up here to a displacement. So, my displacement is changing with time. Displacement changing with time. So, it means that this part of my graph represents my velocity. How do I find this part of that graph? Well, this piece of the graph is given from the gradient. So, the gradient 
of this piece of the graph and a displacement time graph velocity. Okay? So the gradient of velocity, the displacement time graph is velocity. Okay? So this will give us a positive velocity. And if I look here, we can, we can skip this one to jump here. This is also displacement change over time, but it's decreasing. Right? So I'll end up with a negative velocity here. That simply means it's slowing down basically. So here's like you're speeding up, here's like you're slowing down in a way. Okay? Next. Here, I have constant, so straight line. So it's a horizontal line showing that my displacement is remaining the same with time. So if my displacement is remaining the same with time, it means what? It means that as my displacement is time is changing, my displacement isn't. So it means obviously that the person should be at rest or stationary. So during this period of time, the person is stationary. Okay? And that's some of the important things from a displacement time graph. Okay? So one of the things that you must know is that the gradient of a displacement time graph gives us velocity. A horizontal line means that it pulls in a particle is at rest. Next, the velocity time graph. The velocity time graph is slightly different. It shows here that the velocity is changing with time. See that? Velocity changing with time. Velocity is changing with time. So it means here that the gradient on a velocity time graph gives you the acceleration. We can jump here one time. This will be a negative acceleration or what we call deceleration. Follow that? Good. So we have acceleration to gradient, deceleration, which is a negative gradient. So what does the horizontal line represent? This horizontal line and displacement time graph was, was rest. But pay attention carefully for this and try not to make the common mistake that most people make, okay? So here this is saying that my time is changing, yes, but my velocity is remaining the same. So does that mean stationary? No. My velocity is remaining the same, but I am moving. So it means that I am at a constant velocity. So you're moving, eh? Don't, don't forget that. You are moving. And constant velocity means that my velocity, so acceleration is changing velocity. So if my velocity is not changing, then this value here is zero. So it automatically means that my acceleration is zero. That's okay? So a velocity time graph, gradient, acceleration, horizontal line, no acceleration, negative gradient, deceleration. One more. One last. If I wanted to find the displacement after a period of time on this graph, I simply have to read off the value, okay? But on a velocity time graph, if I wanted to find distance travel, what I have to do is find the area under the graph. So the area under the graph will give you the displacement. Let's, let's use distance travel. Distance travel. So if I, if I wanted to find the distance travel during this period, up until here, just find the area here. Here, similarly here, or here. If I want to find area for the whole thing, that will give me the distance travel. So the distance travel underneath, from here to here, is simply the area underneath here. Okay? And here we have a quick summary of kinematics. Kinematics, scale of vector quantities, magnitude, magnitude and direction, distance and displacement, vector, scalar, distance from a starting point, speed, velocity, acceleration, right? A displacement time graph, gradient gives velocity, horizontal line, rest, velocity time graph, gradient acceleration, deceleration negative, and horizontal line, no acceleration.